Good evening, I'm Bob Schieffer. Assisted suicide, it's always been one of the country's most controversial and emotional issues, and it is about to hit the headlines again as California considers whether to make it legal. We start there tonight, then we'll cover these stories. I'm Mark Strassman in Iraq with the latest weapon against the number one killer of U.S. soldiers here. I'm Jim Acosta with the story of a Louisiana church that became a cult accused of unholy crimes. Using his powers for good, I'm Jim Axelrod. Wait till you hear what one millionaire is doing with his money. I'm Lee Cowan on Monterey Bay where tourists are flocking to see a killer of a show. This is the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. For years, Oregon has been the only state where doctor-assisted suicide for terminally ill patients is legal. President Bush wants the Supreme Court to outlaw it there. But now California has taken the first steps toward allowing assisted suicide in that state, a move that is sure to raise the political stakes nationwide. Bill Whitaker has more on this from Los Angeles. Bill? Bob, the assisted suicide bill sailed through a state house committee today, setting the stage for a heated statewide debate. And the two boys. Polly Crouch is losing her battle with lung cancer, but as she declines, she doesn't want to lose control. Should the pain and debility become unbearable, she wants to say when to end her life. The doctor said that this type was particularly lethal and that it could metastasize to other parts of your body and it sometimes went to your brain and that really scares me. I don't want to be alive with no brain power. I've always been in control of my life. I would like to also be in control of my death. The bill working its way through the California legislature would give her that right. Modeled on Oregon's seven-year-old assisted suicide law, the California bill would allow doctors to prescribe lethal doses of drugs to terminally ill patients. Patty Berg is one of the sponsors. Californians want this right. And whether or not there's, there's the political will and the political courage to make it a right is yet to be seen. Beckers say the California bill has even more stringent safeguards than Oregon's to protect people who are depressed and requiring physicians to tell patients in writing of all the other alternatives. Another big difference, California is a much more raucous and diverse state and so are the voices of opposition. Not only the Catholic Church, but advocates for the disabled who call it a ploy for insurance companies and HMOs to get rid of the sickest, costliest clients. Community groups say blacks and Latinos get second-rate health care from birth. We'll feel forced to end our lives so that we don't become a burden on, on our families, our loved ones, and or a, a system, a medical system that's already overburdened with uninsured. Polly Crouch mm. says it's not about politics, but personal freedom. I'm not asking to have control over anybody else's death, only my own. We plan our lives. Why not plan our deaths? Californians are finding that simple question has no easy answer. Bob? So what's the timetable here, Bill? Uh, will this pass this year, or is it going to in the end pass? Do you know yet? Any predictions? Well, Bob, it just made it over the first hurdle today. It now has to go to the full assembly. If it passes the full assembly, it goes to the Senate. If it passes the Senate, it goes to the desk of Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. And whether he will sign it or not is anybody's guess. All right. Thank you very much, Bill. On another controversial issue, yesterday the House, including a sizable group of Republicans, went against the President and passed legislation to loosen restrictions on stem cell research. Those who favor it say the research could lead to miracle cures for a variety of illnesses, but the President has vowed to veto it because he sees the research as a form of abortion. And today there were growing indications the bill may never become law. Here's Gloria Borger now in our Washington Bureau. Gloria? Bob, today a bipartisan group of senators put their own majority leader on notice saying they want to vote on federal funding for embryonic stem cell research, but they could face the same fate as their House colleagues, and that is they have the votes, they say, a majority to pass this measure in the Senate, but you need a supermajority, two-thirds, to override a presidential veto. They don't have that in the House, they don't have that in the Senate, at least not yet, and so the president's threatened veto, and he threatened it again today, will stand.
Uh, one other question uh, while we have you, Gloria. Uh, John Bolton, that controversial nominee to be the uh, UN ambassador, now that the filibuster fight is over, uh, is the Senate going to confirm him? Well, uh, it looks that way, Bob. Right now, the Democrats are involved in some procedural moves because they say they have not gotten all the documentation they need to make a complete informed decision on jo John Bolton. And they are threatening what some in the Senate are calling now a non-filibuster filibuster. But ironically, after yesterday's uh, agreement on judges, it's very unlikely that John Bolton will get filibustered and it's much more likely that the nomination will pass. So bottom line, it looks like John Bolton is going to be confirmed. It looks like stem cell research is not going to go forward. You've got it, Bob. Okay. Thank you very much, Gloria. Under this week's compromise deal in the Senate, the first of the president's uh, long stalled judicial nominees won confirmation today by a vote of 56 to 43. Judge Priscilla Owen was appointed for a seat on the Federal Appeals Court that ends a four year battle. While the uh, president and Congress have been concentrating on judicial nominations and stem cells, that is not apparently what the public has been most concerned about. According to a new CBS News poll, the war in Iraq, the economy and jobs were rated the most important problems on the public's mind. The poll was not exactly good news for the White House. 46% said they approve of the president's job performance. 48% disapprove. Only 34% of those polled said the president shares their priorities for the country. 61% said he does not. U.S. Marines led an attack on an Iraqi town near the Syrian border today. It's the second major offensive in that area this month. Another big operation is underway in Baghdad aimed at terrorist car bombers. Here's David Martin with more now from the Pentagon. In western Iraq, about 1,000 U.S. Marines and Iraqi troops have surrounded a small city called Haditha and are sweeping through the streets attempting to flush out insurgents and uncover weapons caches. The latest official report, which is now several hours old, says 10 insurgents have been killed and two Marines wounded. But Pentagon officials say a much more important operation is underway in Baghdad in an effort to suppress the epidemic of car bombings which have claimed hundreds of lives in the past month. U.S. and Iraqi troops are sweeping through the western part of the city in an operation which Pentagon officials say is based on very reliable and very specific intelligence about the identities and whereabouts of some of the insurgents who are making these car bombs. Officials say they've picked up at least four of the bomb makers they were looking for and run chemical tests which show the residue of explosives on their hands. Bob, military operations will never kill or capture all the insurgents, but if this operation in Baghdad succeeds in getting some of the car bomb makers off the street, perhaps the insurgency can be made a little less deadly. Okay, thank you very much, David. Most of the 15 American soldiers who've died in Iraq since Sunday were killed by roadside bombs. In response to this threat, the military is deploying a whole new kind of heavily armored vehicle. Mark Strassman has our report on that now. Nothing kills more U.S. soldiers in Iraq than roadside bombs blamed for 70% of all U.S. combat deaths. Soldiers call them IEDs, improvised explosive devices, and most soldiers will do anything to avoid them. Give me the courage and strength. But this Ohio National Guard unit actually seeks them out inside this, the Buffalo a 26-ton armored cocoon on wheels. On patrol, they try to find and clear IEDs hidden in Baghdad's roadside trash. Buffalo's pulling out the arm. When something looks suspicious, this oil can, for example, the soldiers rotate the Buffalo's 30-foot robotic arm, and its claw lifts the suspected bomb so they can get a closer look without ever leaving the vehicle. It's such a lifesaver, the Pentagon's ordered 50 more from this factory in South Carolina to join the three dozen already in Iraq and Afghanistan. The Buffalo is a Humvee on steroids, and for this kind of work, it better be. You better be able to take a punch. And this so thing can take a punch. This vehicle is designed to take the punch. IEDs here are getting more sophisticated, often triggered by cell phones or electronics with complicated frequencies. All the more reason for the troops to stay back and let the buffalo take the risk. It really does make you feel safe. Yes, 
Yes, 100% safe. I've been through countless explosions and I'm still here to tell about it. This Ohio unit remembers one IED that exploded two feet away from their buffalo. Scariest five seconds of my life, not knowing whether everyone was all right or not. But everybody was. Everyone was. The buffalo took the hit instead of you. Roger, sir. I mean, you were alive. Cool. And that's what mattered Count. most. Right. Yes, sir. Now, where the buffalo roam, Iraqi roads now seem a little less menacing to U.S. soldiers. Mark Strassman, CBS News, Baghdad. On Capitol Hill today, the House rejected a Republican move to put new limits on the role of women soldiers in combat zones. Instead, representatives voted to let the Pentagon continue to decide how women should serve after consultation with Congress. Next up, a Louisiana pastor and eight of his parishioners are accused of crimes. That is tonight's Inside Story. But first... CBS News honors fallen heroes Bobby Franklin. In civilian life, he supervised prisoners working in the community. He enjoyed coaching baseball and spending time with his kids. In Iraq, he always looked out for his buddies. He told his wife that when he got home from the Iraqi desert, he wanted to stand in the rain. Killed by a roadside bomb, it rained the day he was laid to rest. Hello? Remember me? I'm Digger, the dermatophyte, your nail infection. You may have tried to get me with these over-the-counter surface treatments, but I live deep under your nails. I made myself at home down here, and I'm not leaving. I may even spread out to other nails. I mean, well, would you look at this view? If you have thick, discolored, or flaky nails, over-the-counter surface treatments might not reach the infection. That's why you should ask your doctor about prescription-only Lamisil tablets. Unlike surface treatments, Lamisil is a pill that works through the bloodstream to target and attack the infection at its source, under the nail. In fact, you may start to see clearer, healthier nails in just three months. Lamisil isn't for people with liver or kidney problems. In rare cases, serious side effects in the liver or serious skin reactions have occurred, so your doctor may do a simple blood test. Other side effects, including headache, diarrhea, indigestion, and rash were generally mild. Ask your doctor about Lamisil. It could be your solution. Once daily Lamisil tablets. Get your nail infection where it grows. Get to Big Lots now because the summertime deals have never been hotter. Now through Memorial Day, find closeout prices on summer favorites like picnic supplies, handy collapsible coolers, and this 10-foot pool with pump. Closeout price to just $44. Big Lots, what's your deal today? The most advanced assembly plant in America is now open. A $1.1 billion investment designed to deliver the next generation of Hyundais and thousands of new jobs. It's here that everything we know about quality and reliability will find its way into every car we build, beginning with the totally new 2006 Sonata. A Hyundai like you've never seen before. They say your footprint is as unique as your fingerprint. Just like me, unique. That's why Dr. Scholl's created memory fit insoles with memory foam to form to the shape of your foot. It forms right around your feet. For customized comfort, see the doctor, Dr. Scholl's. Hi, Jay Bush here at one of Boston's famous universities to introduce Bush's new Boston recipe baked beans. Roll that beautiful bean footage. They're slow cooked according to our secret family recipe with a touch of brown sugar, a blend of spices and rich molasses for an authentic Boston taste. I've only shared our secret family recipe with Duke. And he's trustworthy. Welcome to Secret Family Recipe Revealed 101. No! Uh-oh. Class dismissed. Try Bush's new Boston recipe baked beans. By now, most of us are all too familiar with the revelations of child abuse at the hands of members of the clergy, but an entire house of worship involved in these kinds of crimes is almost hard to even imagine. Yet that is exactly what authorities in Louisiana are now investigating, and Jim Acosta is there tonight with our inside story. Jim? Bob, this Louisiana church is now a crime scene. Its pastor is in jail charged with abusing some of his youngest members. What happened inside this church was nothing short of evil. My first reaction was I felt sick to my stomach. I felt nauseated. Police describe a satanic cult that molested two dozen children, some of them babies, over a four-year period. All of it led by the church's former pastor and eight congregation members. How does a church do something like this? Well, 
Uh, again, I think that's that's the sixty-four thousand dollar question: is how does it do this, and how does it get away with it for as long as it has? Sheriff Daniel Edwards says the parishioners, dressed in black robes, assaulted the children and even animals in rituals that included the bloodletting of cats. It all ended when that pastor, Louis LaMonica, walked into a local police station last week and confessed. It's amazing that they can commit that kind of crime and fess up to it that easy. You know, it's like they figured they was going to be forgiven for their sins. Once a thriving church, the congregation dwindled from more than 900 members to a small number of loyalists who closed their doors and shunned outsiders. Police believe that's when the abuse began. Austin Bernard tried to warn his son, one of the accused parishioners, to get out. The son I knew couldn't do this. It's why it hurts so bad. Investigators have brought in construction equipment to unearth evidence of the church's activities, believing the congregation actually tried to bury its secrets, secrets this community wants punished. If they go to prison, they have prisoners that have children too, so they'll take care of them. In Louisiana, child sex crimes can get you the death penalty, so people around here figure it's a good thing these parishioners were worshiping the devil because they just might get to meet him. Bob? Yeah, but, uh, Jim, this is horrible, but are you saying these people could, could face the death penalty? I mean, are you sure of that? I am sure of it, Bob. That is the law in Louisiana, and the local sheriff here who we just talked to in that story, he used to work in this local prosecutor's office and says he is betting on it. Bobby. Okay, well, thank you very much, Jim. Coming up, he uh, spent millions sending underprivileged kids to college, and he does not stop there. This is our Eye on America series, The New Graduate, coming next. So what are we going to do? The CBS Evening News and tonight's Eye on America segment are sponsored by Splenda No Calorie Sweetener. Made from sugar, so it tastes like sugar. Lucky me, I've got a Splenda Daddy. All the sweetest dads know about Splenda, the no-calorie sweetener made from sugar so it tastes like sugar. Almost anywhere you use sugar, you can use Splenda. If golden fried is your favorite, but scampi is your favorite favorite, then again shrimp pasta is your all-time favorite favorite, then don't miss Red Lobster's 30 Shrimp. Choose your two favorites for just $11.99 and soon at Red Lobster. Hey, let's check on the crowds at the Ace Hardware sale. Neil. Yeah, Neil, Neil said he'd be right back. He's uh, buying stuff. Uh, the Ace Memorial Day sale. Great deals like $10 off two gallons of Ace Royal paint and free roller covers after rebate. Sale starts Friday at Ace. Looking for a fresh solution in bladder protection? Then take a look at our new improved Serenity Pads from Tenna with Odazor Plus to help prevent odors and a unique soft top sheet with multi-inlets that absorb liquid faster than ever before. Serenity feels dry. You feel fresh. My doctor said I needed fiber, but Metamucil is thick and gritty. My doctor said I should take Benefiber. Benefiber has just as much fiber and never gets thick or gritty. Ask your doctor about Benefiber. For me, the choice is clear. <laughs> scoop away cat litter. Clumped so tight. It only takes one scoop. Scoop away. One scoop. Done. This is the Civic Value Package from Honda. And this is a gallon of regular, unleaded gasoline. The Civic can get up to 38 miles on just one of these. And with a full tank, the Civic has a range of up to 500 miles. Given the rising cost of gasoline these days, we just thought you'd want to know. The remarkably efficient Civic Value Package from Honda. Now you can lease a Civic Value Package for $159 a month for well-qualified buyers. This week's series, The New Graduate, has mostly focused on this year's grads, the college class of 2005. But tonight, we look a little further into the future at kids who can look forward to going to college thanks to a man so generous, some call him an angel. Jim Axelrod now with our story for Eye on America. 
He woke up at PS83 in Harlem. The subject is dreams. Good dreams and no bad ones. Something they've learned a lot about this year. What's the best classroom in the whole school? K-1-10! Thanks to a self-made millionaire named George Weiss. What are you trying to do here? I'm trying to level the playing field. Last fall, Weiss gathered the parents of 400 Harlem kindergartners and made them the same promise he's been making for the past 18 years in Philadelphia, Hartford, and Cambridge, Massachusetts. We're going to pay for your college education. Did you get that? You're going to give us money so we can go to college? Yes, Brittany, there is a Santa Claus. There you go. Oh. Turns out he's a Jewish guy from Connecticut. There's so many kids just falling off the cliff, and it's really a shame if society doesn't step up Okay, make a difference. Now, the idea of a gazillionaire swooping in to pay for a bunch of underprivileged kids to go to college isn't exactly new. Philanthropists have been doing it for 25 years. What makes George Weiss different is, well, George Weiss. My parents thought he was a little crazy. Good crazy, right? Good crazy, you know. If we're sick, he's there. If we get in trouble, he's there. If we just need to talk, he's there for us. Jolena Fuller was among his first group of beneficiaries, 112 Philadelphia sixth graders back in 1987. 20 went on to college. Fuller did not. But still, she says Weiss changed her life. What do you call him? Pop. Pregnant at 15, she could have been a statistic. Now Jolena runs her own catering business, and guess who paid for cooking school? Whatever it took to get us to the next point in our lives, he has done it for us, you know. Over the years, Weiss has sent well over 100 kids to college, spent $20 million of his own money, and still felt like it wasn't enough. My goal is to help thousands of kids. Who's this? Oh, Hoping to get more of his kids into college, he's now starting earlier, kindergarten instead of sixth grade. Offering tuition for his kids' siblings, even their parents, medical care, legal help. It's just incredible. Maria Morales, single mother of two, including one of the lucky five-year-olds, used the legal help to fight eviction and hopes to use tuition help to train for a better job. He's an angel. He really is. I get the feeling you really mean it. Oh, of course. Like sent from heaven. Of course. George Weiss, some people's idea of an angel, just trying to do a little good here on Earth. In Harlem, I'm Jim Axelrod for Eye on America. And on the Money Watch, the price of crude oil rose today, topping $51 a barrel. That's, that news helped drive stock prices down. The Dow lost about 46 points, the Nasdaq 11 and a half. Still to come, killer whales versus gray whales in a rarely seen life or death struggle. We have it all on tape. Cheating in school. Why it's happening more and more, and who's paying for it. The new graduate, tomorrow on the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. Experience you can trust. Mr. Goodwrench changed your brake pads and inspected your rotors? That's right. We wouldn't trust our car to anyone but our GM dealer. Sit. Looking for Mr. Goodwrench. So what's in the truck? That would be tires. Right, just checking. Find Mr. Goodwrench at all GM dealerships nationwide. Those poor, poor cows. Tires are made of rubber. Those poor, rubber cows. It's important to continue taking Zocor as directed by your doctor. Get more information at Zocor.com. Be there. Someone finally got it right. A denture adhesive with no messy ooze. Announcing polygrip strips. It's the right shape. It's a thin, slim strip. The right hold. That holds like a cream. The right feel. Without the messy ooze, they're pre-measured with the right amount of adhesive. Just wet them and set them. You get a seal that's neat and clean for all they hold that's neat and clean. Polygrip strips holds all day in a neat new way. I shall take the voice of this lovely woman, Mrs. Trump, and put it into this damn head! Why? To tell the world the benefits of Aflac with sex appeal. Brilliant, sir! I know. Now throw the switch. Oh. <laughs> if you're hurt and can't work, Afla can help pay your bills with cash. Genius! And her? Aflac! Know what time it is? Time to show! How right you are, because triple acting show works three ways! 
See, spray and wash dual runs. Yeah. Triple lashing shout clings to the stain. One. To penetrate yeah. and lift them away. Three. To get out tough stains like blood. Better. Dirty motor oil. Better. Triple lashing shout does a number on the toughest stains. Got a stain? Shout S.E. Johnson, a family company. Wanna know a secret? Some otherwise intelligent people don't always eat right. That's why there's Delicious Ensure, a source of complete balanced nutrition, vitamins, minerals, food energy. If you don't eat right, eat smart. Ensure, nutrition for a healthier you. The Wells Fargo Arena is less than two months from opening up. We'll take a look inside and see how close they really are. Coming up next on the News at Six. Rare pictures tonight of one of the wonders of the sea. In this case, off the California coast, it's a hunting ground for killer whales preying on real giants, some of their distant cousins. You hear the word awesome a lot, but what's taking place off the Pacific coast of Monterey really is. Here's Lee Cowan with our report. In a world of heavyweight bouts, this is as big ticket as they come. Killer whales are living up to their name this year attacking and drowning hundreds of slower but bigger gray whales just off Monterey, California. Although this deep sea matchup has been going on for millions of years, it was hardly ever seen. But when the gray whale population blossomed with a whale of a baby boom, killer whales were suddenly served up a six-ton movable feast. It could be as high as um, some people estimate maybe 25% of the calves could be taken by killer whales. It didn't take us long to see why the bay is now known as Ambush Alley. It took just an hour of looking before we had killer whales within feet of our boat. This is the single most dangerous spot of the gray whales migration north. You can see why. What makes it so attractive for the killer whales is in part the depth here. It's anywhere between two and 6,000 feet. It gives them plenty of room to roam and certainly plenty of room to make that kill. There he is, there he is. As a research tool, the kills are invaluable. But for some, they are too close for comfort. Keep going forward. The documentary filmmaker who was trying to capture this clash of the titans found out the hard way. The gray whales being attacked decided to swim under his boat for cover. Suddenly, he was a participant, not a spectator, in a 100-ton feeding frenzy. Neutral, backward. I remember when the first hit came, the, the tail flew came like from the side. The boat clearly lifted up and I could just about still hold my camera. I actually broke off the railing trying to hold on. Darcy Henning was at the helm. I think every one of us on the boat had that moment that we wondered, it, is this it? Some 1,400 gray whale calves are expected to make this dangerous crossing this year and tourists can't wait to catch a glimpse. I think they're mostly awestruck because this is something that you might only see on a nature show. A rare reality show that makes us all feel a little smaller. Lee Cowan, CBS News, Monterey. And that's the news. Now here's Dan Rather with what's coming up later on 60 Minutes Wednesday. Who killed this altar boy? It's a murder most foul. Plus, the only man who's left Mike Wallace speechless. 60 Minutes Wednesday. And I'm Bob Schieffer, CBS News in New York. Good night.